Today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T490s for use in 2024 and going into 2025. Before we say anything else, I'm actually a pretty big fan of this 1080p display panel. It's an anti-glare IPS panel that looks really sharp. I'll just pause for a moment here and I'll list out the hardware specs for this particular T490s that I have in my possession today. There's a lot of really good things I have to say about the T490S. It's very similar to a T480S that I was using for the last two years. The one major downfall is that there's only soldered RAM on the motherboard. And yes, unfortunately, this model only shipped with eight gigabytes. Still, we're going to make the best of things and we'll test this system out for general use and for things like gaming, video rendering, and video encoding. The big question is 8 gigabytes of soldered RAM enough for that kind of stuff in 2024 going into 2025? So for the CPU options it'd be nice to have an i7 with faster clock speeds, but this i5 is actually not too bad at all. Besides the soldered RAM, one thing that sets the T490S apart from the T480S is the upgrade in Wi-Fi cards. With the wireless AC9560 we have speeds up to 1.73 gigabits per second on 5 gigahertz and Bluetooth 5.1. The two-tier backlit keyboard system is always nice when working in the dark. The touchpad as usual is nice and intuitive, and the red track point is always handy to have. Or at least it's something I've gotten used to using ThinkPads over the years. Otherwise it's the same keyboard we've had since the T430, X230, T530, etc. As well as the touchpad being similar to the T540P and T440. Nothing wrong with that, of course, I'm still a fan of the design. And we're using this Lenovo Think Center M920Q Tiny PC to show off the I.O. on the laptop. On the right side, beside the Kensington lock, we have 1x USB 3.1 Gen 1, always on, air exhaust for the CPU fan, and over here is the optional smart card reader, which did not ship with this particular model. Over here on the left side, we have a microphone and headphone combo jack, 1x HDMI 1.4b, 1x USB 3.1 Gen 1, and a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, which also doubles as a USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 1. And on the back here, we do have a SIM card tray. The internal stereo speakers are supported by Realtek drivers, and they're not too bad in a pinch. Of course, having access to a Bluetooth speaker or good headphones really helps things. The return of the 720p webcam is what it is. It'll get you by with that built-in camera and give your skin that nice gray glow. If you're the private or paranoid type, this little switch blocks the camera. So now let's power this thing down and take a look at the inside. First we'll power back on and start hitting enter to get the BIOS splash screen. Okay, if you're trying to get into the system BIOS or a boot menu and you just keep getting back to Windows like we just did, here's one thing that you can do. So hit the Windows key, type control, and you want to open up control panel, navigate to hardware and sound, change what the power buttons do, change settings that are currently unavailable, and we can turn off fast startup. Of course, we want to save changes and this power back down. We can hit that power button, start hitting enter. This time we're greeted with the menu. Let's hit F1 to get into BIOS. And once in on the left side, we want to navigate to config, then over to power. And down here we see disable built-in battery. For performing service, it's a good idea to do this. Just in case you forget to disconnect it later on, it's just a good fail safe. Let's hit yes. So to remove the bottom panel, there's only five screws and you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. And using something like a stiff plastic guitar pick, you can score along to help release the plastic clips and not damage the case material. With the T490S and the T480S and T460S before that and maybe other ones, removing the bottom panel is actually pretty easy and sometimes you don't even need something like this. Yeah, in this case, I didn't even have to use a tool. 
Easy access to the internals is something I really miss about using my T480S, so this makes me a little bit nostalgic. And just in case you forgot to disable the battery in BIOS, you can also remove it from the motherboard connection right here, just by gently pulling the connection out this way. I think I'll remove the battery just to show where you can replace the touchpad, just in case. Okay, so now we can gently lift up the battery. And this actually makes it somewhat easier to release the cable because you have a little bit more wiggle room, especially if you have big fingers like me. And so we can see that underneath the battery, there is a ribbon cable connection from the touchpad to the motherboard up here. And you can replace it just by simply removing these four screws and releasing and then installing the ribbon cable again. Over here is the CMOS battery with the connection to the motherboard. Here's the connection for the speakers right here. Just one connection for the left and right speaker over here. That's the ribbon cable for the keyboard, track point, touchpad, and over here would be the one for the fingerprint reader, but we don't have one installed. And if you want to do that, I think you'd have to buy a new palm rest too. And here we have the M.2 port for our NVMe solid state drive. At least that's not soldered to the motherboard because up here you'll see that the Wi-Fi card is soldered to the motherboard. So there's no upgrading that without replacing it completely. Luckily it's pretty good. And underneath this little plastic piece here is a WWAN card. And surprise, we actually have one installed. I totally forgot about this. This is a 50com model L850-GL. And this is used for connecting to LTE networks if you need access to the internet for whatever purpose. So whoever gets this model gets one of these too. I actually had the exact same one in my ThinkPad P52. I didn't actually get to use it, but the enthusiast inside of me really wants to. Not for any practical purpose, of course. And I've already performed service and added new thermal paste to the CPU here. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but it's very simple. You just need to remove these four screws, gently lift up on the entire assembly, making note that the cable connection for the fan is right here on the motherboard. Don't pull on that too hard. And then you can put new thermal paste on, clean it up, and clean up the fan as well. I believe this is actually a connection for the camera. Here's a bridge connection to the USB port. Over here would be the cable connection for the display panel. So this is the winning feature of business class laptops and ThinkPads in particular. Totally easy to open up and service. So I'll just take a moment to put this thing back together and we'll get on to the next part of the video. I'll admit I was a little bit worried when this system only came with 8 gigs of RAM, but I'm actually finding that it's pretty snappy and for the type of work that I do at my day job, I mean this would be perfectly fine. Running Office 365 is easy and as long as your internet connection is good and as long as your internet connection is solid, browsing the net is a seamless experience and playing YouTube videos up to 1080p is no problem at all. I think as long as you don't overload your web browser with 10,000 tabs or run too many things at once, you're going to be okay. Of course, this is with managed expectations. It really depends on what you plan to do with the laptop, so plan accordingly. So now I have DaVinci Resolve 19 loaded up with my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage. I was playing around with the software a little bit and operation is actually fairly smooth. I only experience stutters and displays when loading up high volume footage, otherwise the experience isn't too bad. And now we're ready to test how long a video render will take. And we have the following settings picked out. Let's see how well this CPU handles and how long this takes. Completed in 15 minutes and 56 seconds. For baseline CPU option, 4 cores and 8 threads, that's not terrible. Now we have 11 minutes of 1080p gaming footage to test a video encode in Handbrake. I've got Creator 1080p60 as a preset, and we're just looking at raw CPU power here. Let's see how long this one takes. And we're finishing up in 12 minutes on the dot. So that's about 28 minutes total for render and encoding. It's not exactly an efficient use of time, but if you're just a casual user and you're doing little clips here and there, that's actually kind of reasonable, especially if you're patient and you have a bit of time to spare. Those with deadlines probably want a desktop PC or workstation laptop. 
So now we're going to test some gaming results and and then over to my workstation PC where I'm recording with my Elgato 4K Capture PCIe card. We're going to test out some games that I know aren't going to run super well like Fortnite and other lighter games like this new one called Snakebird Complete that I'm pretty sure are going to run just fine. I've got Steam loaded up on an NVMe SSD that it can connect via USB-C so we'll be testing out a couple games there as well. So let's see what gaming on the CPU, these integrated graphics, and only 8GB of RAM will get us. And I shot this video on Sunday, November 24th, 2024. So going into 2025, I would definitely think that this option would be totally safe. Yes, of course, there are limitations with that eight gigabytes of soldered RAM, but as I've shown in this video, it's really not that big of a deal for general use. And it looks like the system does pretty well to compensate. Generally, I'll always recommend a used business class ThinkPad over anything else on the market. It really strongly beats out consumer level laptops that are kind of only really meant to last a generation or two. So if you're using a T490S in 2024 going into 2025 or whatever year you're watching this video, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Other than that, thanks a lot for checking out my video and have a great day. As you can see here, I have more ThinkPads to tend to. And I've got some more over here, and up here, and some tough books for fun. This is the life of a computer repair shop. I'll see you in the next video.